Well, bro, what's going on, brother Ian? I am right here, boss. It has been a while. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we were just talking a couple of minutes ago, and um, about a year or two ago. I think when my book just came yes, out, yes, absolutely. you wanted a copy of the book. Yes, we yes, prayed, yes, we encouraged yes. each other, and um, we kind of never saw each other physically. I mean, to talk. Yes. yes. And we'll see each other on social media, and uh, and we said recently, hey, we gotta talk about what God is doing in our lives. We wanna talk about what we're sensing, we want to encourage ourselves in the Lord, which is the topic of tonight, um, today's discussion. And we also want to give you some tips too. So for those of you that are going to watch this in the near future that is watching it now, are going to watch the replay. We welcome you. My name is Pastor Felix and Ian Levine. Yes, my brother. He's an encourager. He's a minister. He's an officer. He's, <laughs> he's everything that God has called him to be. And I'm so delighted to have him as my guest and my friend. So, bro, we've been thinking about this word encouragement. And for those that probably can't see, we have a side here that says encouragement. And uh, I mean, in the last week or two weeks, you know, there was there was a, a tough season or a tough day I was going through. And all of a sudden, he just texts me, <laughs> Happy Father's Day, Pastor Felix. Yes. And, and then we connected and then we started praying for each other. He started encouraging me. And I was like, you have this natural gift of encouraging. Encouragement. Has anybody told you that before? Many times, for many years. Yeah. Absolutely, for many years, persons have said, you know what, you know how to encourage people. Wow. And you know there are persons who can encourage, but you don't feel that layer of sincerity. Yeah. So, but but it, it, it may seem like an oxymoron, you know, you're encouraging, but you're fake about it, but... Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you got the people that just got to bless you, God bless you, you don't feel authentic. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. But, but I just have that, that call in my life to encourage persons. Wow. And they, they really feel that I've been told that for many, many years. Yeah, and I think I first knew you through your gift of song. Uh, is it a saxophone? Uh, the trumpet. The trumpet. Yes, sir. I know there was a horn. And um, I remember you seen it, and then I saw you in uniform, and then I saw you in church. I'm like... Wait a second, I was thinking if you had like a, a triplet or a twin, but you're the same person. Yes, sir. And in different roles, God has used you in mighty ways. And uh, I appreciate that, brother. Even your gift of song, when you did solos in churches, yes. solo functions, yes, sir. you always had that about you. And uh, I know you're always upbeat and encouraging, but do you ever have a down time? Do you ever go through tough challenges? Because, <laughs> Or do you have to like stir up the gift or talk to us for a second? Because there's somebody out there right now that's like, I, I get it, guys. I'm going to encourage it too. But I do have an off day. So maybe you can talk to us. Yes, I, I have those type of days. Just the off days from work. Okay. <laughs> I have off days, as you're saying, in terms of, you know, you're not feeling it. You, you might be feeling dull or, or feeling the... The challenges of life, life yeah, yeah and, and that's that's okay. You know, we're not going to sit here, you as a pastor and myself as a minister of the gospel. We're not going to sit here and say it's going to be sunshine every day. Although it may be sunshine every day, you know, just it, like in Cayman or over the weekend, we have lots of rain, rain. Yeah, but how do we how do we maneuver through those challenges? Wow. And I give you a, a perfect example of about this about the down day. So. My wife had a function on Sunday. Mm -hmm. We were supposed to get our car clean on Sunday. The guy started to clean the car, and three minutes into its action, the rain came. Wow. And it fell really, 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 it was really heavy. Wow. But that didn't deter my wife from going to her function. Why? Right? Because we had an umbrella. Wow. We had a covering. <laughs> yes. And I, I, when persons hear me speak about positive self talk or being positive, they think it's just a. Uh, Oh, you know, ah. the positive, the positive is not raining, but I say yes, it's raining. But how do we maneuver through the rain? We have an umbrella. So yeah. how do I maneuver through those down days? I just maneuver myself with practical things that I can do to get me through the day. That's within your reach to do. Of course, absolutely. Because sometimes disappointment set in, and a lot of times it's set in to things that we don't have no control over. Yes, yes. So it's like, what can we do in this moment? You can get an umbrella. Yes. You can put up close to the function. Yes, sir. You can let her out and make your daughter get out, and then you can find a parking and borrow another umbrella. Absolutely. You can make it work, but the rain is not going to go away. That's right. You got to work with the rain. Yes, and that is exactly what we're speaking about in terms of mm. positive thinking and positive self-talk. We are not... We are not canceling out reality. 
Yes. We, we, we understand reality and we say this is reality. But as you said, Pastor, how do we maneuver? How do we dissect ourselves now in this reality? Yeah. So, first of all, check your mic to see if it's on. The green is on. Let me see. Yeah, you're good. Because I was talking for 30 seconds and it wasn't on. So, whatever I said previously, I hope you can um, caught it on Brother Davine's mic. <laughs> but I appreciate that because. Um, you know, you talk you, in, a, in a general sense. People would say, "Well, you're an optimist," and, and if you're a believer, you have to be. Yes. Because I mean, when you think about the things that the people of the world have been through, I mean, Daniel had to be an optimist. Yes, sir. Joseph had to be an optimist. Moses had to be an optimist. I mean, Rahab had to be an optimist. Yes. I mean, you you name the person that God used, and it wasn't that they didn't have rain in their life. It wasn't that they didn't have imperfection. It wasn't that they didn't have challenges to believe the word. They actually believe the word in them. They actually said, if I could just hold on to this word today, you know, on, on June 28, as we record this, what's the word for me today? Yes. And, you know, then we got to hold on to that. And so I love when you said it's not it's not saying that my arm is not break. It is saying my arm can be healed. Yes, sir. You know what I'm <laughs> yeah. saying? It's like when, when, um, when Peter and John saw the guy at the gate called Beautiful, they were not ignoring that he was a cripple. They were just introducing to something superior. Yes. Yes, which which was the power of God for him, the love of God for him. Yes, and as believers, we need to do that. We're not discrediting people's struggle. We're not saying it hard. We're not even trying to always empathize all the time. Be like, I understand, because sometimes we don't understand. We've never been there, but we are. We are saying God knows. Yes. We are saying God has a word. We are saying He is the healer. We are saying He is the provider. Yes, and so that's what stirs up my faith when I'm feeling discouraged. Yes. As simple as even going for a walk or moving yourself physically from the place that you're experiencing that overwhelming, depressed state or challenging, um, you know, like you said, negative self-talk, maybe challenging emotion. Hey, this is, let's park the car. Let, let's change the scenery. Yes, let's sir. go for a walk. So thank you for those yes. tips. And, and even as uh, even you, you spoke, that, uh, a scenario came to my head, you know, we have the glass and we, we often, because this is lurk behavior, lurk says, mm. you know, the glass is half full or half empty. To me, I really don't capture that. I just simply say the glass has water. Mm. Whether it's half full or half empty, whatever your perspective is, yeah. you know, it has water. Wow. Whether it be an ounce of water or two ounces of water, the glass has water. And once it has water, it has life. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's the essential aspect of creation is that that essence of what's in water and I love that water as simple as it is right now and calm it also can have the rush it also could have the wave and it, have, it could actually form other things and so it's powerful but I, I was thinking about what scripture or what focus or what idea to talk about encouragement and there's a well-known scripture that is known to you and known to but possibly a lot of people that are tuning in here it's this verse that we know either in the King James or we know in the NIV or the NLT and it says, David found strength or David encouraged himself in the Lord. Now I love the fact that David found his strength, so that means encouragement and strength can be found. Yes. You know, and, and the Bible talks about if we draw near to God, he will draw near to us. Is it that God is far or is it that our awareness is, is decreased or has decreased? Is it that is it that, that God has abandoned this question? Because some people think God has abandoned them when they go through tough challenges. Is it that he's done that? Or is it that you're thinking he has because of the scenario? And so this scenario here with David, I mean, David is a, a valiant warrior. He is set to be king. Mm -hmm. He is anointed at the age of about 16. He doesn't get fully appointed at about 32, 33. He's on the run. Yes, sir. He's caught these mighty men, but they weren't always mighty. I'm speaking to somebody now. You weren't always <laughs> mighty. You were not always an encourager. You were not always blessed and highly favored. You went through some things. You went through the caves. You went through the wilderness. But somebody that took you by their arms, stewarded you, discipled you, encouraged you, built you up, became a Barnabas to a Saul or Paul, and guess what? Now you're mighty. So David took these broken men and brought them into their destiny. Guess what? He leaves his camp. He goes on a work. He comes back and finds his wives and finds his children and finds their wives and their children. Over 600 men who are mighty. Yes, who sir. some of them could kill up to hundreds of men. One man could kill hundreds of men. And they said, wow, they start to blame David. 
they start to blame David for what they were going through and for what they were experiencing emotionally. They start to blame David for their loss. One of the things as leaders, we're the first people that people blame. Yes. That's why the Bible says, be slow to be teachers. It's not that we don't want you to be teachers. Just when you're on the platform, when you take that leadership role, trust me, if anything goes wrong, they're going to blame you. Yes, because you have actually now become a watchman of the soul. Yes. <laughs> and so David yeah. now, they're blaming David, even though the assignment was a yes to go. And he, they were thinking about stoning him. And, and I look at this scenario that how can, and, and one, in one season of his life, there are mighty men, they would actually go through the enemy's camp just to get water from Bethlehem for David. Yes, sir. To the point, have, do you have anybody that went to Bethlehem to, for water for you? And David said, if I could just taste a, a, a glimpse or a, a little drop of the water of my homeland, and all of a sudden, that all it took for a mighty man to go get water for him, but now they want to stone him. And, and he's depressed. He's a little discouraged. But before discouragement and before depression grabs a hold fully to him, he calls the priest. And let me just read that scripture in, in, in Psalm 30. He said, When David and his men saw the ruins and realized what Samuel 30, um, chapter 1, chapter 1, or sorry, Samuel 1, chapter 30. So when they saw the ruins, what had happened to their families, they wept until they could weep no more. That's agony, that's grief, yes. that's mourning. David's two wives. Uh, Ayunaham from Jezreel and Abigail, the widow of Nabal from Carmel, were among the, those that were captured. David was now in great danger because all his men were very bitter. Oh, bitterness is close to murder. Yes, sir. Men, yeah, bitterness <laughs> is close to murder. Hey, work on your bitter heart. That's why the Bible says that he makes the bitter water sweet. And so very bitter about losing their sons and daughters. And they began to talk about stoning him. But David found strength, or David encouraged himself in the Lord. Then he said to Abathar the priest, Bring me the ephah. So Abathar brought it. Then David asked the Lord, Should I chase after this band of raiders? And will I catch them? And the Lord told him, Yes, go after them. You will surely recover everything that was taken from you. And so as I see this, David had a rhythm of encouragement. Yes. Speak to that rhythm that you're sensing what David did. Because if the Bible says he was discouraged, he grieved, he did all the stuff, and all of a sudden he's going to potentially be murdered. He didn't run, but he found strength. Yes, yes. And obviously, you can only encourage yourself in the Lord because you first were in the Lord. Mm. You can only encourage yourself with the Word of God mm. because you already knew the Word, the word Ooh. of God. Yes. So we know that because David meditated on the Word of mm. God, that even though he went through difficulties that he knew where his strength came from. So he was able, because of, guess what, previous experiences Come on now. and a relationship that he was able to draw upon mm -hmm. that fountain. Wow. And I bring a bit of my neuro coaching into this and my self-talk training in, into this. That because we are by the process of repetition mm -hmm. and even without having this knowledge of neuroscience or self talk we know that by the process of repetition we know memory is stored mm -hmm. we know that so imagine that you meditate on the word mm -hmm. day and night it becomes a part of you wow. and not just from a, a, a theological spiritual perspective but every message we receive Mm. It's actually programmed in our mind, but the strongest and most frequent message, those messages actually become hardwired mm. in our brain. Yeah. So no wonder that we can have our, our, our little daughter or son, they heard a song, and a few days or a couple weeks after, you hear them with the song. Mm -hmm. Perfectly. Mm -hmm. Perfect words, perfect picture. You're wondering, son, daughter, where did you hear that from? Yeah. What time did you have to learn <laughs> that? Not by the process of repetition. So imagine when we do that with the word of God. Mm. It is stored in us, not just from a spiritual perspective, but it's actually stored in the neural pathways wow. in our brain from the neural coaching. Perspective is actually 
literally how wired. That is why it's so important that it says in, in the book of Psalm 1, you don't meditate on his word day and mm-hmm. night, and we shall be like what we're coming back to the water. Yes. We shall be like trees planted by the river of water. Wow. Very important. So cannot they be moved. Cannot be moved. So it, it's critical that David knew the word. Mm-hmm. So if you, if you know the word, and when you know the word, when you go through times of challenge and difficulties and hardship, the word will naturally instinctively become stirred up within you. Wow. And then you will be able to encourage yourself in the Lord. And as pastor, uh, as men, uh, as men of mm-hmm. God, as ministers of, of the gospel, we are not saying that every time you release the word that you will instantly find, sense that encouragement yes. or, or tap into yes. it immediately. Yes, yeah. Because we know many persons who mm. say, you know what, I'll I'll, I'll I'll try it. I'll try it and what has happened. But we just want to say encourage mm. yourself and press on. Wow. Because we know the word of God is sharp and powerful. Yeah. And it will do what God has ordained it to do. Yeah. And I'm thinking about David, and I'm thinking about the pattern of his life. As imperfect, I love David because I believe he gives us a, a glimpse of the imperfect yeah. man yes. linked to the perfect God. Yes. Yes. And then the Bible talks about God will rebuild, not Solomon's temple, but David's yes. fall intent. And so uh, there's something that David did prophetically where even though he was in the Old Testament, yes, he shows us a glimpse of a New Testament reality. I mean, now he's a king, not king yet, he's appointed, but now he's tapping into the priesthood. Yes. And then he taps into the prophetic. Yes, sir. And then he realigns the man's vision, because the Bible says without, where there's no vision, people perish. He encouraged them. He received encouragement first. Yes. He shared a strategy. All of a sudden, these 600 men who were grieving, who were mourning, who were destitute, just moments ago, is now led again by the same man, the one in the stone. And it's powerful. And so... I find that, you know, David also says, Psalms 119, how can a person's ways be pure by taking heed to the word of the Lord? Yes, sir. And then in Romans 12, it says that be transformed by the renewing of our mind. And you talked about patterns, and I'm thinking like, okay, then, you know, we there's shortcuts, you know, and there's familiar roads. Yes. Like, like in Cayman, like there's certain roads that you grow up. As an officer, you've yeah. been on certain yeah, roads. Yeah. <laughs> Even though the development is there, you, you can see the road map from 1980 or something. You can see the road map from 1990 or something. You see it, you... You could take the lights off and you can get in there. Yes. It's because it's familiar. And that's how we have to treat the truths of God. Where sometimes as believers, we're too familiar with what God hasn't said mm-hmm. than what He did say. Because I believe that as a, as a person, I'm hearing God's voice for me. I'm hearing my voice to myself, because we have a voice to ourselves. I'm hearing people's voice against me or for me. And I'm also hearing the enemy's voice. And what we've got to do is filter all those voices that don't mean as well yes. and tap into the greater reality, which is his voice, which could partner with our voice, then they'll two become one. Yes, sir. And so I, that, that is so powerful. And, and what you what you said there about having hearing God's voice and your voice and their voice and mm-hmm. the the voices, a million and one voice once again it, it brings me back to my my studies in mm-hmm. the in the area of self talk which which has told me that from the moment we were born. Wow. Literally, everything we heard, that you just said it so perfectly, everything we heard, saw, experienced, they actually got, as I said before, programmed and wired. But then we've been told that by the time a person reaches the age of 18, well, I watched this carefully, and let's say that that person grew up in a reasonably good stable home environment. Mm-hmm. So he or she reaches the age of 18, they go in a reasonably good stable home environment. That person would have heard at least one hundred and forty-eight thousand notes. Age wow. of eighteen, good home would have heard one hundred and forty-eight thousand notes. Wow. So, all those non-productive messages, all those messages that can work against them. Wow. So when we come into the church, mm-hmm. imagine we have all your congregational members here. Yeah. yeah. And imagine that we were to add those 148,000 notes by all our congregations. Millions. Members. Millions potential millions. Of those non productive messages. Um, and that's why the word of God is so important. And once again, we grew up myself, grew up in, mm-hmm. 
in the church and hear pastors say about what the word. And yeah. you may have to be careful. It sounds good and we embrace everything, but when I sit and digest sometimes what, what I hear from you know just globally pastors and some local pastors I've heard send it to I work the word, but I, I often say to myself, you know, I I'm not going to work the word. Mm. But I will let the word work me. <laughs> yeah, of course. It sounds good and cute. Work the word. You know, you preach and you say, hey, work the word. Yeah. I'm trying to find a verse. But I, I, don't, I don't want the word to work me. Mm. Work the word. Wow. Work the word. Wow. Work the word. Work wow. the word. The word became flesh. Yeah. I want the word to work me. Yeah. To walk. Work me. I must work the word, but the word has to first work me. And that's when Jesus chose his disciples. Yes, sir. Jesus chose them to work them. Yeah. Jesus chose them so that the work, yeah. the word could tap into their like life. The word work me. Mm -hmm. And every time we fellowship with Jesus, we're actually fellowshipping with the word. Yes, sir. <laughs> and it looks different, right? So so the reason why there's no hundred percent strategy to encourage yourself and there's no right or wrong way, you need to tap into how your sensory skills acknowledge God. Yes. So for me, in my tree, in my, my stirring up might be a memory of a verse. Yes. And I start bringing like a, in my pastoral or teaching gift. To others, it might be a song. Yes. To others, it might be nature. Yes. To others, it might be someone like Brother uh, Ian here, you know, encouraging me because where, when he encouraged me, I wasn't really feeling encouraged, but it took your word released to my heart that activated the faith that I needed to get through that tough moment. And so it's the, the, the thing is, is to find the ways to encourage yourself in God. Yes, I, and, and before you, you move on there, Pastor Felix, when you when you came to my mind on Father's mm. Day, I, I, I received just the all of us, you know, Father's Day, you get all these generic messages, Happy yeah. Father's Day. Mm -hmm. Some person going to their phone, their contacts, and they just, Happy Father's Day, and they just send that, send that to a million and one person broadcast broadcast but for me as you said earlier it was direct mm. it was a specific right. personal message happy father's day pastor felix or pastor felix yeah. happy father's day yeah so you knew it was coming from you yeah yeah and it's powerful because then it goes to like you know sometimes as believers we think god too busy seven billion people in the world and he has the ability to tap into, be very personal to us. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? And so God can, and God uses people. And so sometimes when we're looking for a word, we're just honoring people. And God uses people. Every time, every time, you know, somebody, God used someone, he used another person first. He used, he used the slave, uh, slaves, the, the, the slavery uh, system to get Joseph into his destiny. Yes. It was wrong, it was bad, yes. but he used that tough moment to position him to save a nation. Yes. I mean, you talk about when when um, Joseph wanted to abandon Mary. He used the angel. Yes. And then that stirred Joseph's heart towards Mary. Yes. And yes. so God is always using his creation to yes. minister. Yes. The Bible says that we have angels, we have all received angels to minister to us, right? Ministering to us who have inherited salvation. And so even when we see David, I mean, a lot of people would say, well, David killed Goliath, which is true. But what killed Goliath? Was it the stone of the word? Mm -hmm. <laughs> because sometimes, guys, I believe that when he sent forth the word, the Bible says it shall accomplish what it set out to do. Yes. And because he said to, um, to Goliath, hey, pretty much you're not in covenant. I'm in covenant. I've seen God fight for me. He's going to fight for me today. And he said, you uncircumcised. Talking about covenants here. Yes, yes. And he sent the word. And as he sent the word with the rock. Yes. You know, that stunned him and he took what I said. So for me, I'm finding sometimes the challenge is that the enemy puts in our mind is that our words will have power. Yes. You know, and, and the minute you give, send me a text after we text each other, you send me like a message and, 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 and maybe I didn't have the right words to pray for myself then, but I use his message as a prayer. And as I release that word over me, I release it over my wife, I release it over my night, I start to build faith. And all of a sudden that fear, I mean, I, and I, you know, the clouds and the storms are in my mind start to move away yes. it's still raining yeah, but yeah. now i have an umbrella yes sir because the bible talks about the hedge of protection yes and you know and then the bible talks about that that, that god wants to cover us under his wing yes and then yes. the cherubim the serpent so i i immediately felt what was always there i just need to grow in awareness 
Yes. It's like when Elisha had said to his servant, open his eyes, Lord, so that he can see that there's more force and against us. As believers, when we're struggling emotionally, when we're struggling in depression, when, when we're picking up the senses of the environment, because we are feelers sometimes, sometimes we tap into what we feel and not into our faith. Yeah, I, I, I like what you were saying, Pastor Philip, because sometimes in the in the Christian space as believers, mm -hmm. we, we only think that we are, and we are not minimizing anything here, mm -hmm. we only speak about our our spiritual connection, but we're living in a, a physical world. Yeah. You know, we have sense of thought, feelings, emotion, temperament, personality, yes. we will. And sometimes when we hear the message, you said it so so true. You know, we hear the message is powerful. We know the spirit of God's there, mm -hmm. but our senses are just processing that. You, you just said, you know, the just shall live by faith. Mm -hmm. I'm not my mind, I'm my brain to say, well, guess what? We, my my house is going to be taken from me in the, yeah. in the next two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> and that's a reality. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So as believers, how do we how do we maneuver that? You know, wow. we, we keep pressing on with the word of God. And I I honestly believe that once we allow the word to work us instead of us working the word, mm -hmm. <laughs> when Come we on. allow the word to, to work, work us that God will begin to give us the strategy wow. that, and, and send our, and we're going to become a bit more Christian. Uh, Reflection of Christ. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because we, we, we will now see well, I prayed, and God started to move things around. So the right people, the mm -hmm. right circumstances. Opportunities, yeah, connections. You, yeah, yeah, you realize that you have some money Somewhere, 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 some check coming in, <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah, sir. Or somebody just all of a sudden want to give you yes, something, yes, and that's God yes, working sir. on people's so, hearts, absolutely. So, we're, we're saying don't minimize prayer, don't minimize your connection with God, mm -hmm. keep praying, keep that connection with God, and uh, allow God, mm -hmm. uh, as Pastor Philip just said, to, to start to move the, the chess pieces. Mm, I'm sure you are confident that as you rely on God, that He will really bring those circumstances onto you in yeah. terms of where he wants you to go. It says in Psalm 84 11, mm -hmm. the Lord God is a sun and shield, S-U-N and shield. Mm -hmm. He bestows favor and honor or grace and glory. Watch this now. Mm -hmm. And no good thing will he withhold mm -hmm. from those who are walking uprightly. Once wow. again, Psalm 84 11, the Lord God is a sun and shield. And before I pass back over to you, uh, Pastor Phil, I want to decree over your life that mm -hmm. the Lord God is your son, S O N and shield. He has bestowed favor and honor, or grace and glory. God has bestowed favor and honor upon you, and no good thing. Yes. Let me repeat that: no good thing will He withhold from you because you are walking out right. The one more scripture, and I come on. back over to you. Psalm five twelve. God will bless, and I love these mm. scriptures with favor. God will bless the righteous and surround them or garrison them or encompass them Come with on. favor as a shield. So, are you righteous? Therefore, yes. you are blessed by God, yes. and He is surrounding you yes. with His favor as a shield. Yes. Final one Psalm on, 92 12. Watch this now. You ready for this? Are you ready for it? The righteous shall flourish mm. like a palm tree and grow mm. like the cedar of Lebanon. Mm. Are you righteous? Therefore, God's word has promised that you will flourish like a palm mm. tree Come on now. and grow like the cedar of wow. Lebanon. I love it. You said make the word work you instead of you work the word. Yes, sir. What thought came to mind was the difference between anticipating and expectancy. We get so disappointed when we expect, but we always get encouraged when we anticipate. Yes, sir. And so it's similar because when the word works us, no matter the outcome, we bless. Yes. When we try to work the word, it's like sometimes people try to make it like voodoo sometimes. Yeah, you you want know, to manipulate, want to manipulate God's yeah, promise yeah, and yeah. God's will. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes we don't know, but we know all things. Yes, yes. So I can make that thing work. And I can make that word work inside of my heart and my mind. Say all things. Lord, it does not look like this thing is working for my good, but all things you said. 
And if it's not good now, that means you still work it. Yes, yeah, because you know, we say, and then we, we go to God. Mm -hmm. and we, we, we say God according to your will and according to your word ah. you know this has to be done ah. you know this has to be done and then when we when it isn't done the way we expect God to do it then this mind and the devil or whatever it yeah. is starts to play, play games and, and say, tricks you know, you know what you never pay your tithes you know oh. what you, you never they say you know what yeah yeah you know what you know what you know what and guess what and none of those things are the equation nothing God is just saying I'm working on you I have a better plan for you the word is working you let it work you yes yes and, and, work yes you. And it's so it's so important that as as men of God as believers that we that we don't get Drawn into this, mm -hmm. that when things don't go the way we want it to go, mm -hmm. that we and I say whether it's the devil or not, whatever or the circumstances, yes, yeah, that we, we start to take box. Okay, yeah, mm -hmm. I remember I never paid my mm -hmm. last month. I was mean to my wife, yeah. and we had an argument, but... yeah, and I'm going for A to Z, trying to validate, mm -hmm. trying to validate the lack of. <laughs> yeah. Wow, yeah. but what David said, I have never seen. The righteous come on forsaken oh, are their children begging, begging bread. for bread yeah, he so, is ever merciful come and, on. Less, and his seed or his children are always come blessed on. come on so so we were encouraging you guys today to make the word work you and we're encouraging you to not not expect but anticipate you see i anticipate my wife to love me but if I say I expect, I, I put that little expectation and I put it in a very minute and a very focused point of how that love should be expressed. Yes, sir. I know God loves me. I know God has forgiven me. So when God has the ability to expand my horizon of how he loves, how he forgives, and how he bless, I move away knowing and falling more in love with him. And so we are, as believers, we need to stop putting God in a box of how he can and how he will. Yes. God will. God is. You know the Bible talks about that God, 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 God is um, God, God, God surrounds us, uh, His righteous like how the mountains surround Jerusalem. Yeah, and then in the Bible talks about He protects us, right? And when we sleep in, it also tells us that when we, He will forever protect us in our home yes. and outside of our home. Yes. So that means in the very safest place on planet Earth for me, in my physical home, in the most exposed place in the world, for whatever that may be. Guess what? God is with me. Absolutely. By night and by day. Yes. The harm by night and the harm by day. The yes. pestilence and all that stuff. Whatever it is, he is with me. Yes. So when I begin to when I have a I used to have night terrors. I used to have some I don't know if anybody had night terrors where they would like have like dreams or imaginations or they would see things that are unhealthy for the brain, you know, terrors. And and so sometimes some of it I think was my imagination, some of it I think was an attack. But whatever it was, I had a lot of challenges of it. Up until like my your uh, middle twenties and stuff like that. What I realize is the scripture, the Lord never sleeps nor slumber. It's when a God doesn't sleep nor slumber, that means I can sleep. Mm -hmm. Yes. If God neither sleeps nor slumber yes. over me, that, that means God is aware of every state and every season of my life. So therefore, whatever torment and I'm trying to do, speak to God. Yes. Speak to the cross. As, as the, speak to the blood. Yes. You know, speak to the anointing. Hallelujah. You know, the you know? Says, speak to the palm. We say, speak to the Lord. <laughs> it's like it's like what the Bible says in Jude that even when the enemy tried to actually take the body of Moses, I think it's when the archangel says, "In the name of the Lord, get me behind." You see what I'm saying? So we're not rebuking the enemy in our authority. We're rebuking the enemy in his authority that we get to partner with. And so headaches has to be lifted. Terror has to be gone. Demons have to flee. Yeah, Legs have to be healed. Yes, yes. Dead has to rise. And so this is the power of our partnership with God. Yes. Not to want it up, not to be seen as arrogant, but to be confident and humble enough to know we need him. Yes. And he's available. Yes. yes. It's powerful. Yes, and there's a scripture that says that those who trust in God uh -huh. are like Mount Zion and they cannot be moved. Come on, brother. They cannot be moved. So you trust in God, you are like Mount Zion. Mm -hmm. You cannot be moved. You may feel shaken. This table is shaking here. But it can't be moved. No, can't be moved. Amen. You know, you might feel discouraged, but you can't be moved. Mm. You may feel sick, but you can't be moved. You can't be moved. You mm. may feel depressed, mm. but you can't be moved. You may feel down, but you can't be moved. Mm. Because you are trusting in God. Come on. You are like Mount Zion, and you cannot Proverbs be moved. 3, 5, and 6. Trust, Trust in, in the Lord, Lord with, with all our heart. heart. 
and lean not on our own understanding. In all our ways, acknowledge Him, and He will direct our path. Come on. And so, where are we getting all this scripture from? We're getting this scripture primarily from Psalm, from David, and his history with God. But pretty much, it's it's his relationship. Yes, sir. And so, we need to find the secret sauce of success. Many times, people look to leaders and say, "Oh, he preached good. Oh, he teach good." But I don't worry. I'm not concerned about the lights, camera, and action of a believer. I'm concerned about when there's no lights and no action. I'm concerned about when he with his fellow brother and fellow sister. I'm concerned about how he loved the children or, or his wife or vice versa, lady to the, you know her husband. I'm concerned about how he treat the least of these. I'm concerned about what James says. If a rich man comes inside of a place, don't offer him the best seat and kick out the poor man. I'm concerned about those things because when you are led by the Spirit of God, this is those who are sons and daughters of God are led by the Spirit of God. We have the Spirit of adoption. We manifest. Yes. We manifest our inheritance. We manifest our identity. Yes, we manifest our sonship. And that is that is, so when Jesus Christ says, I only say what I hear my father say. I only see what I see my father do. And he's partnering with that because in his spirit, the Holy Spirit is telling him, Ooh, this woman, though she caught that adultery, you can forgive her. Yes. You know, this these people are plotting against you, thinking about blah blah blah, you blasphemy. But if you want to forgive him first, or healing, it's up to you. But do both. Yes, you see what I'm yeah, saying? Yes. How can he know that, you know, 5,000 people, not counting the women and children, yes, so there's more people, and get some Johnny cake and fish mm -hmm. and put it to the Father and say, Lord, bless it and it multiply in the hands yes. of the disciples. How can he see? Because he saw the plenty before there was any. Yes. yes. And we need to begin to tap into that, that there's plenty for us, even though it's not fully manifested yet. Yes, yes. And I'm glad that you said that even... Even though the, the world as we know it, we mm -hmm. know the world is going through this financial difficulties and crisis, but we know the word of God says that he in the time of famine Come on. or in the time of drought, this is what he's going to do for his believer. He's going to prosper you, he's going to make you fat mm. or flourishing. Flourish, yeah. So we decree over your life that even in, in the any season of drought in your mm. life, any season of stagnation in your life that God will cause you to flourish. And you yeah. said something that really brought a, a thought back to my mind just a couple of weeks ago. My, my wife and I were, we were going to a, a, a function mm -hmm. and I, I was running late so I told her to go ahead of me and I'll mm -hmm. get there when I get there. And she messaged me and said that she went to sit at the back. You spoke about mm -hmm. sitting at the back. They brought to yeah. the she went to sit at the back and just as she was about to sell her herself, so one of the ushers came and said, no, we have a special wow. seat. <laughs> we, we, we have a special We have a special seat for you yeah. and your husband. Yeah. And I, when I got there. That, that, that is in the Old Testament, that is in the New Testament. Jesus said, when you go or invite to a place, don't sit in the highest seat first. Unless you have a different person to sit there. Yes. But sit to the back. And then it's ready to promote it, you yeah. know? And so... So that's also that's humility. Yeah, yeah and, and once again, I want to declare over you, like mm. the word of God said that promotion is your he will exalt your heart. He will exalt your heart in this honor. He will promote mm. you. You see, I, I always say that, that that when we are promoted by man, we are promoted. Mm. But when we are promoted by God, we are promoted with honor. Mm. When we when we are exalted by man, we are simply okay. there. But when we are exalted by God, it is done. Honor. So once wow. again, I declare, honor is yours, promotion is yours, favor, the favor of God is yours. Come on. Well, we're going to wrap this up, and, and I know that you're sitting there, thinking there, maybe walking, maybe listening on YouTube, on Facebook, wherever channel you're using to tune in today. But uh, I know we're going to do this again. But yes, yeah. sir. Uh, but today was all about encouragement and finding ways to encourage ourselves. And you, you said, listen, it has to be with you first. Yes. You have to be, even if it's one scripture a day, just meditate on it. Even if it's one truth about who you are in Christ, meditate on it. Because when you need to stir it up, we need to make a withdrawal and it has to be there. You can't go to the bank. I work in the bank. You can't go to the bank and say, my account number is X and I want X without money being in there. You know, and so God has already accredited to you through Christ as righteousness. Yes. Yes. So we need to tap into the righteousness of God that is available to us in Christ and make our withdrawal. God, I don't feel like it, but my faith says I have it. Yes. You know, I'm confessing this. I'm agreeing with this. And when you begin to agree and, de um, decree and declare over your life these things, heaven begins to invade. 
Yes. Our angels are like, he sound like God. Yes. He sound like Papa. He sound like, hey, we're supposed to help him because he just sound like you, Jesus. Yes, because when we declare the word of God, it doesn't matter which world they come from. Yes, angels are destroyed. Yes. So we don't even have to say, God, your word says this or what. We just speak I'll the word the of word. God. Joel 22, 28, I know you're about to say, it says, and ye shall be free of sin, and it shall, and be, shall established. be established, and let go fall on your bed. Come on. So as soon as we declare or decree the word mm. of God, angels are deployed to cause his word to be established. Come on now, brother. Yeah, we got to, we got to do this again. The last scripture, this was something I was thinking about for about 10 minutes ago. We're talking about thoughts, and we're talking about the words that we hear. Sometimes it's it's our voice. Sometimes our voice is agreeing with the negativity. But many times um, we're hearing the voice of others in our life. You said 148,000 no's for the average person who was raised in a in a nuclear home or a supportive home. And somewhat um, at the age of 80, he or she has heard 140,000 um, no's. But the Bible says this in Psalm 139. It says, how precious are your thoughts about me or towards me, O God? They cannot be numbered. I can't even count them. They outnumber the grains of sand. And when I awake, you are still with me. And so we live on an island. We have one of the best beaches in the world, Seven Mile Beach. And if you pick up a, a, a grain, just a, just a handful of sand, God has more thoughts for you. So anytime we think of negative, and, and I'm, I'm preaching to the choir because sometimes that could be negative too. That's why I need fellowship. I was telling my church on Sunday, you need to have positive people in your life. You need to have godly people in your life. Not when things happen, but prior to. Because God would use them as a catalog of encouragement. God would use them as an agent of change and blessing in your life. And so we need to have these healthy bridges in life. You know, unhealthy ones, we got to put some boundaries there. But the healthy ones, we need to stir it up. And they would not be appalled if there wasn't a part of us. That's right. And so Paul, who wrote more than half of the New Testament, he was not always Paul, but it took someone of encouragement, the son of encouragement, to stir up the gift. And so every one of us had to have discipleship, had to have mentorship, had to have someone seeing something greater inside of us than what we're currently experiencing. And the Bible says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So there's so much inside of us. And so what I'm saying through this last scripture is that tap into it. You know, you're the head and not the, the tail. Amen. You're above and not beneath. Amen. You know, God talks about, you know, in Jeremiah 29, I have plans for you. That means God is writing something for you. That means God has set things in place for you to prosper you and not to harm you, to give you a future woven with great hope. Amen. And so just be encouraged. You talked about the signs of, 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 of inflation or challenges. I mean, Elijah, you know, he calls the famine. Yes, sir. <laughs> I mean, he, he wanted to turn people's heart towards God and he declared a famine and he forgot that he was going to be affected by it. <laughs> and sometimes, I'm going to be honest with you, sometimes in our life, we cause some of it. It always got fault. Yes, sir. <laughs> we cause some of it. But even though yes. we caused it or we partnered with it, God still sent supply. Yes. He sent the brook. Yes. He sent the birds. Yes. And when that brook dries up, the Bible says in Psalm that he leads us again to still waters. Yes. So, did, you know, sometimes when God transitions you, it might be drying up over here, but there's a great supply over here. So look out for the birds. Look out for the streams that God is bringing to you because he will bring what he has promised to you to pass. So I don't know if you want to share the last parts and, and maybe you can tell people how to connect with you on Facebook, Instagram or whatever. Yes, yes, yes. So I am Ian Levine, I-A-N, my first name, Levine, L-A-V-I-N-E. You, you just type that in on Facebook and you'll see me right there with all my motivational yeah. stuff. And you, you, you spoke about the any parting words or part of scriptures. Mm -hmm. I, a couple of those scriptures I, I already mentioned, but we you know Ephesians 3.20 Now to him who is mm -hmm. able to do <laughs> Come, Come on, on brother. <laughs> I, just move I just get I get excited Exceedingly you know? mm. Abundantly Above all you can ask or imagine oh. According to the power which is in work Or working within you So we see for you All that you are hoping for Thinking about Dreaming about God mm. Elohim Come on. El Elyon the Most High. El Rohi the Lord your shepherd. Mm. El Shaddai. Come on now. <laughs> go ahead, boy. Go ahead. El Rafa, God uh, your healer. He is Jehovah able. Jireh. Come on now. He is able to do for you exceedingly. Come on now. Abundantly. I'm going to think about exceedingly, abundantly. It mm. sounds like the same word. 
but God is saying that He is doing for you more, more, mm. more, more than you can ask, mm. or more on, than man. you can even imagine according to conceive. There you go, according to the Holy Spirit, according mm. to the power in you. So God is going to do great things for you, in you, through you, mm. around you, and to you. Come on. And yeah. if you don't know none of those names that like you just said, just remember that I am that I am. I am, that I am. Whatever you need God to be, He is. Amen. <laughs> he is healer, provider, you know, everything you need from the Good Shepherd, He is all those things. You want to know my name? Tell Him I am sent you. And so I'm blessing you with the, the grace of the I am. He is with you. He's always been there. Open up your spirit and receive more from Him on a daily basis. Brother Ian, it was a pleasure. God bless you, Pastor. And, uh, and I hope the people were blessed. And uh, we'll have you preaching a journey pretty soon. Amen. Amen. That, God will bless. Be, that will be a journey. <laughs> that will be a journey. Amen. See you soon. God, God bless. bless.